It goes without saying that at this point the good folks at Marvel Studios weave complex interconnecting narratives that are often seeded years before they even become relevant in a meaningful way. Early easter eggs will become whole plot lines in later movies and seemingly tiny details can come back to bite heroes in their beautifully chiselled buns. In other words, no brushstroke is unintentional and seemingly no question is left unanswered unintentionally. However, over the course of the MCU's existence, its films have left some mysteries tantalisingly unresolved, teasing fans and viewers with hows, whos and what ifs. Now some might be on the cusp of being answered as the universe expands, but one can't help but muse on these questions to painful lengths in the meantime. With this in mind, I'm the Southwest Savage Jules from WhatCulture.com and this is the 10 biggest unanswered Marvel movie mysteries. Number 10. Where's the Red Skull? At the end of Captain America The First Avenger, Hugo Weaving's Red Skull is randomly sucked off somewhere mysterious and yes, I've just, just realised what I've read out. Since he's never mentioned again, it's safe to assume that Marvel just wanted us to believe he's dead, even though Kevin Feige has gone on record to state that the manner of his death was chosen specifically to showcase to people that he could perhaps pop up again. So where the hell is he? Is he trapped inside the stone as the lore of the comics would suggest? Is he on the other side of the portal that the Shatari entered from in the Avengers? Is he lost between time and space? And most importantly, will we get any of these answers in Infinity War and beyond? Number 9. Black Widow's Red in her ledger Black Widow's past is very much a hot and mostly mysterious topic in the MCU. We've seen flashes of it in her Age of Ultron nightmare sequence, but so far very little has been mentioned on how she escaped the Widow program and when she became affiliated with the air quotes good guys. All we know is that she had Red in her ledger. I got Red in my ledger. I'd like to wipe it out and that she regrets some of her past actions, but we don't know what specifically it's referring to, or indeed what Loki is saying when he taunts her with Dracov's daughter, Sao Paulo and the hospital fire. What we need is a retrospective solo movie with those answers and also how Barton knows all about them, but at the moment they aren't coming anytime soon. Number 8. What's next for Abomination? At the end of The Incredible Hulk, Tim Roth's excellently hammy abomination has been locked up in the cryo-chamber prison in Alaska as revealed by Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., presumably so that General Ross can experiment on him to find ways to beat the Hulk, or maybe even to become the Red Hulk or something exciting like that. So what now? Is he still on ice? Well, Marvel reportedly had plans for him to return in Age of Ultron, but they went a different way, so it seems that their decision to keep him alive was intentional. The question now is whether they follow through on a return at another point. Number 7. How does Tony Stark suddenly get better? In Iron Man, it's pretty firmly established that Dr. Yinsen was forced to implant an electromagnet in Tony Stark's chest to stop shards of shrapnel burrowing their way into his heart. In Iron Man 2, Stark himself upgrades the arc reactor that powers not only the suit, but also charges the electromagnet, which is keeping him alive. At no stage is surgery considered a viable option because it's just too tricky, which is why it's easier to accept that Stark was allowing the reactor to poison him as feeling a little under the weather is better than, you know, being dead. So how in Iron Man 3 does he suddenly get better? How is he able to have open heart surgery to have the shrapnel removed all of a sudden? If it's just a matter of looking for a good surgeon, then you have to wonder why Stark wasn't looking really hard for them when the arc reactor was literally poisoning him to death in Iron Man 2. Number 6. So who's the real Mandarin? When Marvel and Shane Back shock the comic love world by taking the iconic and massively racist villain the Mandarin and turning him into a terrorist construct and the creation of an actor, they pissed off a lot of people. Luckily they wimped out and gave us the Marvel one-shot All Hail the King that re-established that there actually is a terrorist leader called the Mandarin and he wasn't best pleased that his name was being dragged through the mud. It was a cop-out for sure, but it leaves open an almighty loose end that surely can't stay unresolved forever. Number 5. The Second Infinity Gauntlet for a while, the Infinity Gauntlet spotted in the back of Thor was the best MCU easter egg of all. It was a clever nod to the forthcoming Infinity Saga storyline and a concrete suggestion that Marvel really were planning the MCU back from day one. But then they had to go and spoil it all by having Thanos recover his Infinity Gauntlet from somewhere entirely different in Age of Ultron. That meant that Kevin Feige then had to come out and say that there were actually two and that it later transpired that one of them, presumably the one in Odin's vault complete with stones, was actually fake all along, making Asgard's mightiest ruler look like a Right, idiot. Even so, why the hell would anyone go to the extreme of making two? If it's fake, it needs a backstory to establish why Odin was duped, and if it's real, why would anyone make two doomsday devices? Number four. So how did Loki kill Odin? 
The ending of Thor The Dark World is a deeply problematic one, and all because of the survival of Loki. Having sacrificed himself, the God of Mischief reveals that he's actually alive and impersonating his father for the ultimate wink to the camera ending. But hang on, if Odin was actually Loki, then what would have happened if Thor had actually accepted his offer of taking the throne of Asgard? Wasn't that a bit of a risky maneuver? And even more personally, where the hell is the actual Odin? He's literally one of the most powerful beings in the entire Marvel Universe, and Loki just managed to rush back to Asgard, bop him on the head and take his place? And and if he's not dead, as suggested by his presence in Thor Ragnarok, then why would Asgard's leader just wander off and abandon his homeworld in wartime? It's all incredibly odd. Number 3. Is the leader actually coming? Some ideas plotted in the early Marvel films were pretty much dropped out of existence before the studio really hit its stride and started hitting homers every single time. That very much goes for most of the narrative in The Incredible Hulk, even though it's still classed as part of the MCU and is far more relevant now thanks to the reappearance of Thunderbolt Ross in Civil War. So with him back in the game, it's interesting to look back at some of the other plot points that weren't resolved in the Hulk's reboot. For example, how could a legitimate and pretty ominous origin story for Dr. Samuel Stearns end up going nowhere? In the comics, he would go on to be the major supervillain, the leader, but in the MCU, he's been completely forgotten. Presumably, we're supposed to believe that the gamma mutation led to nothing, and he's still going about his day as usual, albeit with a massive cauliflower head. Number two, why doesn't Iron Man have a bad Asium suit? In Iron Man 2, Tony Stark discovers that he can synthesize an incredibly rare element, initially called Vibranium in the novelization, but later retconned to Stark's new name, a Badassium. For all intents and purposes, this is basically Vibranium, so why doesn't Tony Stark use this element that he can generate himself for his Iron Man suits? Wouldn't the use of a near indestructible metal be, I don't know, sort of useful? Particularly as Stark has to fight an actual robot villain with Vibranium outer casing in Age of Ultron. You'd think that that might have, you know, jogged his memory about his own super element existing. And number Number one, why was S.H.I.E.L.D. monitoring a surgeon? In the timeline set by the visually stunning Doctor Strange solo movie, Strange has his accident in early 2016 and becomes a skilled sorcerer by the end of summer, which is all well and good if you ignore the fact that that's basically impossible, but there's also one other huge plot hole. If he wasn't air quote powered until 2016 in MCU, how come he was on S.H.I.E.L.D.'s watch list of potentially dangerous targets in Captain America the Winter Soldier? What the hell did Arnim Zola's magic algorithm detect in his life as a surgeon to suggest he warranted extermination? And I mean, fair enough, you can look at a kid pulling the legs off spiders and think he's gonna be evil in a general sort of way. But how do you look at an arrogant douchebag surgeon who cares for literally nobody but himself and who has serious relationship issues and work out that he's gonna have a life-altering car crash that'll ruin his career and change his life totally to become a sorcerer? That, my friend, is some next-level soothsaying. And that's our list. Got any more Marvel mysteries that you want us to muse on? Well, let us know about them in the comments section below. And if you want to come explore my enigmas, you can do so on Twitter at RetroJ with a zero. If you enjoyed the video, then like, share, and subscribe for more. As as always, I've been Jules for WhatCulture.com, and I'll see you soon.